All right, so uh, now let's talk about some of the legal and administrative considerations to be very specific. So without a will, the state in which you live will make all the decisions for you. They will basically make a will that states what happens to your things if you don't have one stated. Now, each state may have a slightly different spin on that. That is maybe better for some families, better for some states. So really what the encouragement here is, almost regardless of the items you have, uh, is to go ahead and make a will. Now, some, uh, some of the JAGs, some lawyers will advise that if you don't have much, it's not that big a deal, and that's probably true. Uh, that becomes more um, an issue of if there's something very personal to you, important to you, that you want someone to have. Uh, again, I know this is obviously uh, a tough subject, but and some people, you know, avoid it altogether. But you know, something that you, uh, you know, their family will be happy later that if this is done correctly, a will when when properly done allows you how you're going to distribute your money and property and assets in the manner in which you want to the individuals you choose. So to receive your possession. So you know, it's uh, it puts you in charge throughout the whole process, every aspect of this. And that's why we're, you know, we're covering everything in as much detail as we can for you and encouragement for you to look more into what you need uh, for your situation. Another major legal uh, arena is uh, the power of attorney. Um, so, you know, the power of attorney, basically in simplest language, uh, it's a legal way to allow a person to act on your behalf. Um, so what that means is, uh, you know, and there's two types, what that means is in one type, the general power of attorney, it gives a person, um, pretty much ability to act on behalf of all of your affairs. So they're basically in lieu of you. Um, that's, that's one where you have to very, consider very, uh, um, you know, there has to be some unique situation why you would want to do that. But the second one, the special power of attorney, that authorizes a person to act on your behalf in only specific situations. So maybe you have some specific legal event coming up and you need representation, you know, um, something to do with, a, I don't know, a title, signing for a house, um, you know, something like that, a car that is was planned to be bought and it just falls during that time. I, I can't think of many examples that this would be a case of, but, um, you, you know, you can specifically look at powers of attorney just in specific arenas too. So that's what's also meant here, you know, maybe specifically just medical or maybe specifically just some specific finances. You, know, you should find out in advance if a, um, a business that you're dealing with even accepts the power of attorney. So you're going to want to you know, make sure that this power of attorney is going to hold in the given situation, you know, that um, you, you plan to use it for. Okay. SGLI. Um, the thing about SGLI is y you have to understand that it's basically just, you know, low cost life insurance. Um, it is available up to a maximum of $400,000 and $50,000 increments. So, you know, that can be uh, increased as you see fit to that up to that 400,000 amount. Now TSGLI, that's a slightly different take. It's more short-term financial assistance to someone who's severely injured uh, as a service member and veterans. It's to assist, assist them, assist you in their, in your recovery. So if there's some traumatic injury that took place during duty, um, every member who has SGLI also has TSGLI. And uh, that TSGLI coverage will pay uh, anywhere between twenty-five and hundred thousand dollars, and it, it's depending on the type of the law. So obviously, there's going to be people involved in getting information and making that decision, and um, you know, it's and it's all those injuries directly from the traumatic injury. Your um, the effective date of the, the de deployment orders, so your SGLE coverage automatically increases to the maximum amount allowed by law. And while deployed, 
of the Department of Defense reimburses the premium up to the maximum 400,000 SGLI coverage and TSGLI premium. Um, it's very important that you review who you have as your beneficiaries. The, the SGLI beneficiary needs to be current. And then uh, similarly, um, you need to verify your DEERS account. And I would even encourage you, you know, if you haven't gone there in a while, I know it seems like during the pre-deployment there's lots of things you're being prompted to do, and you may think everything is in order, and then you look and see that uh, it's been a while since you've done it, and there's a name that's not on there, a new newborn. There's a name that's on there that shouldn't be on there because you, you never resolved it after a, a major life event. So you're going to want to take a look at that, and there's lots of specific arenas um, within DEERS that need a careful looking at and reasons why you would need to go in there and make some changes. And then with your TRICARE benefits um, that are listed in DEERS, you have to check those ID expiration dates all, all related.